In this video, I'm going to be producing some bindings, also known as bandings for guitars. I'll be using the AccuSlide system along with the AccuSlide 2 rail to produce these bindings. These bindings actually measure 250 thousandths of an inch tall by 80 thousandths inch thick wide, so they're very, very small pieces of wood. Now I'll be making both single layer bindings as well as multiple layer bindings. So I'll be starting off with a solid piece of wood, in this case a piece of maple. This maple board is 2 inches square by 36 inches long, and I attach it to a sacrificial fence, which is a 1.5 inch tall piece of MDF. And then this gets attached to my AccuSled 2 carriage, and then from this I'll slice my boards. So I start off by slicing a board, which will be 2 and 50 thousandths, or a quarter inch thick wide, and I get this board quarter inch by 2 inches wide. And from this board I'll put it back on the AccuSlice system, and cut off my 80 thousandths inch thick pieces of wood. I end up with these small bindings. I'll also be cutting some other woods, different colors and contrast to woods, that I'll use to create the multiple layer bindings. Okay, I'll begin by attaching my sacrificial fence with my two inch square piece of maple. Again, this maple board is 36 inches long, and I'm using my AccuSled 2 uh, carriage which these, with these flat plate uh, clamps. So the first step is to attach the MDF sacrificial fence to these clamps. So I try to make sure it's centered first of all, and then I usually pre-drill the holes. And then use these number eight by one inch long screws to attach the plate to the sacrificial plate. These bindings could also have been cut on a table saw. However, the band saw is a much safer tool to use to cut these bindings, and the curve of the blade is much smaller. And then I make sure it rides freely on the uh, rail. It doesn't bind. So it's important that it uh, rests on the table, but doesn't bind. So I'll be starting off by cutting some boards that are 250 thousandths inch thick, and then later on I'll cut, cut off some thinner boards that'll probably be 20 thousandths to 15 thousandths inch thick to be used for the uh, multiple layer uh, bindings. So the first step is to zero my index wheel. And then push my board till it just touches the pan saw blade and then lock my course adjustment knobs in place. I can also lower my blade guides as low as possible. Again, the lower you put these, the safer it is to run the bandsaw. Pull my board back, make sure my mag jigs are released, and then one full turn for the curve of the blade, and then let's do, uh, say, 25 thousandths to cut off a piece of scrap wood. This first cut is just to give me a flat surface, so all subsequent cuts will be perfectly parallel to that cut. Then I lock my mag jigs in place. This video has actually sped up 10 times actual cutting speed for viewing purposes. I actually cut quite slowly because the slower you cut, the smoother the cut. Now that first cut was just scrapped to give me a flat surface. Now I'm ready to start cutting my boards. So for this first cut, I'm going to be making my boards 2 and 50 thousandths of an inch thick. So I start off by releasing my mag jig clamps. I need one full revolution for the curve of the blade. Now each revolution of this uh, index wheel is 50 thousandths of an inch, so five revolutions will give me a quarter of an inch or 2 and 50 thousandths. That's five revolutions, 2 and 50 thousandths. Lock my mag jigs in place and I'm ready to cut. Now I'm using a half inch blade, eight teeth per inch, because this board is two inches thick. Uh, later on when I go to cut the thinner boards, I'll change the blade to a finer tooth blade. But right now I'm using an eight teeth per inch, half inch wide uh, Timberwolf blade. Okay, and there's our first board off the system. 
Again, it's 250 thousandths or a quarter inch thick wide by two inches in this dimension. And later again, I'll put this back on the bandsaw and slice off the thinner slices. But for now, let me continue cutting some additional boards. The main advantage of using the AccuSlice system is to get smooth, straight boards with no bandsaw blade drift. And the reason you get the smooth boards with no bandsaw blade drift is because the boards is attached to a, a sacrificial fence which rides on a carriage, which rides on a rail. So the only movement of that wood is through the bandsaw blade. There's no lateral movement of the wood. And since the wood can't move in this direction at all, you get no blade drift. You get perfectly straight, flat cuts. And again, you notice I was cutting very slowly. The slower you cut, the smoother you cut. Here I'm cutting two additional boards, each a quarter inch or 250 thousand inch thick. I just cut off three boards there, quarter inch thick. Now when making these bindings, I'll be making some multiple layer bindings. And what that is is going to be a layer of, in this case, maple, which is a quarter inch thick. And then I'll put a layer of a, of a contrasting wood, maybe something like walnut or paduk uh, or red heart, uh, maybe 20,000 inch thick piece of that. And then another layer of maple, another 20,000 inch thick. And I could even do, you know, three or four layers. But there'll be alternating layers of contrasting woods. Each of those additional layers will be between 15 and 20 thousandths of an inch thick. So I need to cut some thinner maple strips, 20 thousandths of an inch thick, uh, for those additional layers. So once again, I release my mag jig clamps, I do one revolution for the curve of the blade, and then I'm cutting a board 5, 10, 15, 20 thousandths of an inch thick. And lock my mag jigs in place. Additional board slices, 20 thousand inch thick, are cut in the same manner. The variation in thickness of the subsequent boards is within one or two thousandths of an inch. So from that uh, one two inch board, I got three boards, uh, 250 thousand of an inch thick, and I got 12 boards, uh, 20 thousand of an inch thick. These thinner boards will be used to make the additional layers for the uh, multiple layer systems. And the only sanding I do on these boards is I sand the fuzzies off the bottom. Sometimes where it kicks out the edge of the bandsaw blade, you get a little bit of a, of a fuzzy, you gotta sand that off. At the very end where it kicks out the bandsaw blade, you get a burr. And you gotta either sand it off or use a chisel to take that off. So sometimes you can see that pretty good there. That fuzzy on the burr in the end. That's the only sanding I do. This surface is actually good enough for, for gluing. So now let me go and cut some additional boards. I wanna cut some uh, I have some uh, walnut boards, some uh, uh, bloodwood, some uh, yellow heart, and some other woods of a contrasting color. Then I'll cut some thin strips to use for these multiple layer bindings. I'm now cutting some thin slices of some contrasting woods or some other boards. In this case, I'm cutting a piece of walnut. I also have some other boards such as uh, some uh, red heart. And then finally I have another board, which is some uh, paduk. Again, cutting slices between 15 and uh, 20 thousandths of an inch thick. And these thin slices will later be glued to the quarter inch uh, maple boards to produce by multi-layer laminate strips. I'm going to make my three layer bindings. In this case, it consists of my quarter inch thick piece of maple. And then I have a piece of walnut, uh, 20,000 inch thick, and another piece of maple, 20,000 inch thick. So it'll be a three layer binding. So to glue these together, I normally use my glue jig. This glue jig consists of two rails. These are two inch tall uh, aluminum rails, quarter inch thick. And they're meant to slide on these uh, rails. Uh, so they slide on this rail with some keys in the slot here. And the purpose of this is, uh, in clamping these, it, the rails won't rock. By using these uh, clamps, I can tighten it, that these rails stay perfectly straight. So when I glue these pieces up, the edges will be perfectly straight and parallel to one another. And now to use this, I normally cover everything with wax paper, just to keep glue off the uh, system. I start off, I have a piece of aluminum, or I have a piece of uh, wax paper, and I did uh, fold it in half. And I'll be putting that in this, uh, between the two rails. 
And it just acts like a, a barrier to prevent glue from uh, sticking. So I'll be putting these pieces in here like this. And I'll push my second rail up. And then clamp, use clamps to clamp it in position. But first of all, I need to put glue on my pieces. Let me put a piece of wax paper here to protect this area. And let's start gluing up these surfaces. Now I am using the Type Bond 3 glue for this. Uh, I'm using Type Bond 3 glue because it is waterproof, so when you go to bend these bindings, uh, the glue is waterproof so they won't come apart if you dampen up your uh, binders. And I coat both surfaces of all my boards. For this multi-layer laminate board, I'm just gluing up uh, two boards to my quarter inch uh, thick maple board. Um, first of all, by attaching a, a piece of walnut and then putting another thin layer of maple on top of that. Later I'll be uh, gluing up some uh, larger boards with you know four and five and even six uh, laminate layers. Again, I use the same process. It just takes longer because there's more layers to put together. But again, they're glued up the same way using type on three glue, uh, gluing both surfaces and then clamping it together using the glue jig system. My three layers glued up. I stick it in this cradle of wax paper. Push my second rail against the pieces. Make sure it's centered in the air. And I usually tighten these clamps up just enough so it's not tight that it moves but it doesn't rock. And then I start clamping it. And I put clamps continually down the piece. And I usually put these in these spring clamps. And I usually put the clamps one low, one high as I go down the row. So that first one is low, this next one's higher. That way it gives more even clamping pressure. that dry for about three four hours. Okay, it's time to remove the clamps here. And there's our finished uh, three layer piece. And I'll sand the edges on my edge sander to clean it up and that's ready to uh, Make my three layer uh, binders. Okay, I just took this to my uh, edge sander and sanded the edges to get rid of the excess glue and this is our resulting uh, piece. And now my quarter inch uh, strip pieces of wood and I want to be able to cut thin slivers off of this so I need to attach this to my sacrificial fence. So this needs to attach the sacrificial fence like that, making sure that it stays square. And it needs to stay square because when I put this on the bandsaw, it's very important that this piece not rock up. It stay nice and flat, that this rests on the bandsaw table and gives me nice smooth cuts. I found a good way to do this is to use a jig I made a few years ago for the uh, AccuSlice system. This is actually designed to hold pieces of wood against this cleat and clamp it in place you know, for slicing on the bandsaw. But it also makes a good glue up jig. And the way this works, I take my sacrificial fence, push it against the cleat here, take my board I want to glue to it, you know, add some glue to the edge, put it in here, and then clamp it in place with these offset cam clamps. Gives just enough pressure for a good glue joint. And at the same time, keeps everything nice and square. 
So now I'm ready to uh, set this up, but I want to keep glue off my jig. So I just have a small piece of wax paper that I fold it in half. So I can put my sacrificial fence against there, and let me apply some glue to this, and we'll glue it up. And that's done. Let that dry for, you know, maybe two hours and be ready to cut. And again, it's staying nice and square. Okay, I have my pieces all ready to slice into 80,000 inch thick uh, slices. And this first piece is just a solid piece of uh, maple, quarter inch thick. Uh, and it's already attached to my uh, sacrificial fence, ready to glue up. I have a second piece here, which has actually has two laminate layers on it. That's a layer of paduk and maple, each about 20,000 an inch thick. And then I have a third piece here, which actually has four laminate layers. Alternating maple and uh, paduk. So that's with four laminate layers. And I have one more piece which is uh, in the press being glued up. That one will have six laminate layers, alternating uh, maple and uh, paduk. These laminate layers are all glued with Type Bond 3 glue. And I use Type Bond 3 glue because it is waterproof. So if you hit uh, wet the wood, uh, to use, put it on your bending iron. Uh, the glue won't come uh, apart. So once again, I just make sure it slides freely on the uh, bandsaw table. Uh, this wood is resting flat against my bandsaw table, but it's not uh, binding. Now I do have a, a different blade on here. This blade is 18 teeth per inch, half inch wide blade. Uh, this is a new blade that was, uh, I probably bought this blade about three years ago. It's been sitting on the shelf, but uh, this is an ideal application because this board's only a quarter inch thick. So an 18 teeth per inch blade work quite nicely with this uh, board. So once again, I can lower my blade guides. Again, just for additional safety. And my first cut will be to, first of all, zero my gauge, push the board until it just touches the bandsaw blade, lock it in place. Make sure my mag jigs are released. I'll pull this board forward. I'll advance it one full turn for the curve of the blade. And another full turn just to cut off the scrap piece. So this first cut is just to uh, square up the board to give me a nice flat surface. So all subsequent cuts will be perfectly straight and parallel to that cut. So now I'm ready to cut my first board off. So these boards, this board is a quarter of an inch thick and I want my strips to be 80 thousandths of an inch you know, thick. So I release my mag jig clamps. I advance my um, fence one full turn for the curve of the blade. And then I'm going to be cutting these 80 thousandths. So that's one full turn, which would be 50 thousandths. And then 10, 20, 30, so that's 80 thousandths. And then lock my mag jigs in place. And I'll keep repeating that process after every cut, one full uh, turn for the curve of the blade and then 80 thousandths. And I'll keep doing that until the board's all cut. I got 14 strips for that. It wasn't quite enough to get a 15, but it was pretty close. So I just need to sand off the uh, fuzzies off the bottom. And there's our resulting maple strip. 
This next board is my laminate board. I have my piece of maple. Then I have two layers, each 20,000th of an inch thick of paduk and maple on top. Now when I glue these up, it's important that the thin layers be on the top. Because the bandsaw blade is going down through here and you get a fuzzy on the bottom. And I don't want to kick out and chip out this thin layer of laminate on the top. So I'm trying to put the, the laminate layers on the top and the thicker maple board on the bottom so that it doesn't chip out these uh, thin layers. So I did that in the other, other pieces too with the you know, additional laminate layers. All the laminate layers are on top and the solid wood is on the bottom so it doesn't kick out and, and chip out those laminate layers. Once again, I continue cutting the board uh, to slice off 80,000 inch thick pieces of wood until the entire board has been sliced. Okay, I got exactly 15 boards off of that uh, two inch wide board. And let me first of all sand the fuzzies off the bottom. And that's our resulting uh, strip. I got 15 of these strips, and that's a layer of paduk and maple. This next board it actually has uh, four laminate layers. I have my uh, piece of maple, well, about maybe 200 thousandths inch thick, and then there's a layer of paduk, maple, paduk, and maple. So a total of you know, five layers, four, four of those are laminate layers. And again, notice this is the sacrificial fence facing up. My laminate layers are on top. I don't want to be uh, chipping those thin laminate layers out so the blade will cut down and I'll get my fuzzy on the bottom, not on this top edge. And that's our four laminate layers attached to that board. And once again, I just sand off the fuzzies. And that's the resulting board. I got 14 of those out of that piece. This will be the uh, final piece of uh, binder for this video series. And this consists of six layers of laminates plus my maple board. The bottom layer, of course, is maple. And then there's alternating paduk and yellow heart. And then the top layer is another piece of maple. Each of these laminate layers is 15 thousandths of an inch thick. So they're much thinner than the, uh, the previous boards. And I also reduced the thickness of this maple board. So the total thickness of this is around, I think it's around 280 thousandths of an inch. And once again, my laminate layers are in the top so they don't chip out uh, with the bandsaw blade. So once again, I got 14 strips off that two inch board. Let me just sand off the fuzzies once again. And that's the resulting board. Six laminate layers. So the top layer there is maple, and then there's three layers of paduk, and the layers, uh, two layers of uh, yellow heart in the middle of that paduk layers, and the bottom thick layer, of course, is maple. I decided to go ahead and run these strips to my board sander. Uh, there's some very, very minor bandsaw blade marks. That 18 teeth per inch blade is pretty good, but it's not as good as a table saw. Uh, but if I run these through my board sander, that should clean it up pretty good. Uh, these boards actually measure uh, about uh, 85 thousandths. So I can take off you know, one or two thousandths off each side, and it should get a nice smooth surface on both sides. So I have my board sander set to around 82 thousandths right now. So I'll run one side and I'll lower it, you know, one or two thousandths and reverse it to the other side. And now those strips measure between 79 and 80 thousandths inch. And they're perfectly smooth. That's as smooth as you get off a table saw. There's no bandsaw blade marks in it at all. So I'll do that in the remainder, remaining pieces that are nice and clean now to make uh, good glue up pieces. All 
After producing these various binding strips, I wanted to determine how easily these could be bent. Now I can bend the uh, solid pieces of wood pretty easily using my bending iron. In fact, this is the one I did earlier. It bent out pretty nicely. That was no problem. My concern was what would happen when you add multiple layers. How easily can these be bent using a, a bending iron? And so to test this, I got one of my strips. This is a strip of five layers, alternating. Uh, I think this is a red wood or a red heart and a maple. It's five layers. He's 20,000 inch thick, and I was able to bend this pretty easily. It worked pretty nicely on this system. So I want to test some of my uh, binders to see how they work. So I bought this uh, bending iron on eBay, and I mounted on this platform. I added a, a, temper, a digital temperature controller and a thermocouple. Uh, I've got this all set up with a Formica top. The heater cartridge that I've got in this is a little bit small. I can't even get to 300 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So I'll probably will replace that heating iron or heating uh, cartridge in the future with a larger heating cartridge so I get a little higher temperatures. But it is hot enough to, uh, to bend some of these pieces. So I said I, I was able to bend the, the solid wood no problem. So let's try the uh, one of the pieces with, uh, with four laminate layers. Let's add some water, get it wet, and this iron does get hot. So let me start bending this. In make, making these laminate strips, the one thing I did use was uh, Type Bond 3 glue. And I select a Type Bond 3 glue because it is waterproof. So wetting it, you know, the glue won't come loose. And that bent fairly easily. So no problem bending bending this. And no splitting on the outside. So that's pretty good. That's uh, four laminate layers plus my base layer. So let's, let's next uh, try to one. I'm really interested in seeing how it works. And this is my six laminate layers. So I have a base layer of uh, maple. And there's six laminate layers alternating uh, paduk and maple. So again, that's bending quite nicely. So the result is uh, these trips are definitely bendable quite easily, oh, even though they are laminates. This concludes this video on producing the bindings for guitars. Using the AccuSlide system with the AccuSled 2, we produced a total of nine different patterns of bindings. All the bindings were 36 inches long by 80 thousandths of an inch thick and the height varied from a quarter of an inch for the single wood bindings to about 300,000 for some of the multi-layer bindings. The simplest bindings were just two single board bindings with no laminate layers as shown on the left. The first was made from maple and the second binding was made from bloodwood. The third binding was constructed from base maple board with two 20,000 inch thick laminate layers consisting of walnut and maple. The fourth binding was similar construction, but Paduk was used for the contrasting laminate layer. The fifth binding contained four 20,000 inch thick laminate layers consisting of alternating Paduk and maple woods. The sixth binding also has four laminate layers consisting of bloodwood and maple. The seventh binding was constructed using walnut as a base wood and then has four alternating yellow heart and walnut laminates, each 20,000 of an inch thick. The eighth binding was again constructed using maple as the base wood and then has four alternating walnut and maple laminate layers, each 20 thousandths of an inch thick. The ninth and final binding was again constructed using maple as the base wood and has six alternate layers of paduk and maple laminates. Each of the laminate layers was 15 thousandths of an inch thick in this binding. I did learn to implement a few new techniques in producing these bindings. First, the AccuSled 2 was the ideal sled to use with the AccuSlice system in producing these bindings. 
Its low profile makes it easy to see and cut the thin strips, and its 30 inch length made it convenient for slicing the 36 inch long strips. The glue jig system was easy to use in gluing up the laminate layers to produce laminate strips with tight glue joints with no gaps. Type-on glue was used for gluing up the strips because it is waterproof, which was important in bending the binding strips. The vents that I made several years ago for clamping boards using the offset cam clamps was repurposed for this video to clamp and glue the laminate boards to the one and a half inch tall sacrificial fence. This turned out to be a quick and efficient tool for gluing and clamping the laminate boards to the sacrificial fence with perfect square joints. I used a one half inch wide by 18 teeth per inch bandsaw blade for slicing the one quarter inch thick boards to produce the 80,000 inch thick bindings. This blade worked quite well and gave fairly smooth surfaces. However, I could just as easily have used a 14 teeth per inch blade. As a final step after cutting the 80,000 inch thick bindings on the bandsaw, I decided to run them through the board sander to remove the very fine bandsaw blade marks on the surfaces of the bindings. This step was probably not necessary since the surfaces produced with the 18 teeth per inch blades was fairly smooth, but to get an even smoother surface, I did run all the bindings through the board sander, removing one or two thousandths of an inch off each of the surfaces. Bending the solid wood bindings was easy and straightforward using a bending iron. However, I was not sure how the laminate boards would bend. By adding multiple laminate layers to the bindings, the strength of the laminate boards increases and the flexibility will become less. I was particularly uncertain how the five layer laminate strips would bend. However, when I did the testing with the bending iron, the multi-layer laminate strips bent just as easily as the solid wood bindings. Additional information on the AccuSlice system, the AccuSled 2, and other accessories described in this video are available on our website. Once again, thank you for watching this video. If you have any additional questions or concerns, please give us a call or drop us an email. We'd be happy to talk with you.